Dr. Ramirez, can you tell a little bit about yourself to all of our listeners here? Yeah, so um, I graduated from ICO two years ago in 2019 with Amrit, Deepan, and Reggie. <laughs> um, so, For those of you who don't know, my nickname is Reggie, and Rosa calls ooh, me Reggie. Insider. Yep. <laughs> All right, <laughs> insider, right there. All right. Um, yeah, so I graduated two years ago. I started working at a private practice right after graduation. Well, not right after graduation. That's where the mission trip came in. But my last internship I was at, it was a private practice. Um, my teacher was awesome. And she was like, why don't you stay on with us? And I'm like, great, right, awesome. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I spend a lot of time with my family. I like to get away when I can, as you guys know. <laughs> yeah, Rosa um, lives on a ranch and goes horse riding all the time and yeah, shows so off on Instagram <laughs> when she goes to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> So Rosa, where have you done your optometric mission trips? And what do you think are the advantages of participating in these trips as an OD student and after graduation? Kind of strange the way that I ended up um, doing a mission trip at ICO. Um, I went as a part of a Christian group, which I mean, I'm a religious person, but it was not like I wasn't a part of the Christian group at school or anything. Um, it just so happened that we got an email and I told a classmate of ours, Carolyn, and I was like, why don't we do it? And we're like, okay, like we thought it would be something nice to do. You know, we saw so many people in a day, like it was a week's work trip, which I think you, you guys did a mission trip too, right? Or we did it did? in Mexico. Okay. I thought Yours was Honduras, Honduras, right? Yeah, we ended up going to the Galpa Honduras. Yeah. Um, and it was just the people were just so grateful and like yeah. you could just tell like how happy they were when you put the glasses on them and it was just like oh my gosh like you have never seen this good in your life like you know so that was such a rewarding feeling so I, I just loved it and the doctor that we went with Dr. Valeria and I can't remember her last name for the life of me but she was so sweet and that's how she went by she was Dr. Valeria. And honestly, she was just a very inspiring person because she ended up like moving out to Honduras, like shortly after graduation and just starting a clinic there. And like she has devoted her whole life to this mission to go mm -hmm. and provide eye exams to the Honduran people down there. And it's just like what um, just like I just thought she was such an altruistic person that's the word I was looking for mm -hmm. like like to give her whole self to like you know people like she wasn't um she wasn't Honduran she doesn't have family members like that are Honduran yeah. but she was just like you know what she felt a calling like to go down there and provide services for people and I just thought that was amazing like I don't know so yeah um it was like she's a very inspiring person anyway so that was a nice experience and I think as a student like you should really try to go on one of these trips because it's just awesome like the experience that you get is just unforgettable and rewarding and yeah I don't know it, it was it was a really good trip yeah I definitely agree with you um our trip mine and Deepon's trip to Mexico um we saw a lot of students or um sorry a lot of patients a day and some of them would travel from like like a village from two to three hours away just to see wow. us. And they would be like camping out for the whole day. And they were so grateful. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, it, 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 was, it was an incredible um, feeling you got. And, you know, these people actually appreciated you. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, it, um, yeah, I would definitely want to do that again. Yeah. Very rewarding. So yeah, mm -hmm. rewarding is probably the best word to describe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and good for Dr. Valeria for like that sounds like she just sacrificed everything to just go down there and help people. That's that's crazy to me. She that's did. Amazing. Can you imagine like just picking up your things and like, all right, I'm gonna go to this country that I know nobody, that I barely know the language, and just you know, like provide yeah. for these people and like um but yeah, so so she was just very inspiring, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I don't know, like that's that's I don't I don't know if I'd ever be capable of doing that much, but like if you like that's what inspired me then to like do the mission trip. So I'm like, you know what, like I might not dedicate my whole life to um underserved an underserved population, but for sure, um, 
you know, being able to help here and there, I think is Rosa, speaking of, you know, going on these mission trips, you kind of planned your own mission trip right after graduation, right? Um, We just talked about like all the different things that are involved in a mission trip, you know, the people, the volunteers, the equipment. My big question for you is how did you go about planning an international optometric mission trip on your own? Like, how did you choose and set up the location? How did you know which locations were safe for you and your team? And especially if you've never been there before, how did you organize all that stuff? I think it's so funny right now. You said that. I'm like, oh my gosh, that actually sounds pretty impressive. Like, I'm like, right now. It is. That's why we brought you here. (laughs) That's why we're proud of you. Thank you. Once I, like, boards passed and everything, like, I was super grateful to God for, like, getting me past all those milestones and I was just like you know what like that was a mission (laughs) yeah passing like boards passing oh yeah um I don't know just going through optometry school so um once I was kind of like okay like I'm licensed and um we're about to graduate and I was like you know what like I've oh I had thought of this going into optometry school it's like one day I would like to you know give back to my parents hometown um, my, both my parents are Mexican. They come from the same little small village in Mexico. Anyway, so it's not a very touristy place. It's a small, you know, maybe 10,000 population um, town, but um, so it's not big. And, and after that, like they're really, it's, it's a very isolated 10,000 population mm-hmm. town. So there's no real big cities around there. Um, so anyway, so I was like, you know, I'd, I'd like to give back at, at some point if I could. And when I was, um, before optometry school, I was working for a doctor, Dr. Lewis, and he actually is in charge of serving a lot of the Chicago public schools. So he has one of those mobile optometry units. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, Yeah. but it's, um, basically it's like when we went to CPS, um, at school, oh. but we would take a lane over to a different, um, school every day and like set up in a library, set up in a classroom and, I remember I, I used to be a technician that carried all of that stuff in my trunk. So I would show up to the school and, and set up a lane and put the computer, measure the 10 feet and like put the barapter up, um, mm-hmm. carry little mobile split lamps. And um, I would set up like the whole desk and uh, for the optometrist. And I remember I would, I would do like a quick auto refraction on, a, on the, on the children, um, IOPs, um, vision check, um, give them to the optometrist. And then that's, where um so basically that's where I'm getting at is I want to give a shout out to Dr. Lewis because he's the one that actually ended up providing all the equipment for me and yeah. it was honestly so nice of him because I remember when I was working with him and I got a step accepted to school he was so excited for me and I was like yay and so he was happy for me and during school he'd always give me work and I would always catch up with him here and there and he'd be like how's school going and this that and we always kept in touch kept good communication and it came to a point where I would joke with him and be like, Dr. Lewis, like, you know, you don't use your equipment all summer. Like, would you let me borrow it and go down to Mexico and uh, do a, you know, like a, a mission trip? And he'd be like, yeah, Rosa, anytime. And I'm like, okay. And like, this is me as a student. Like, and he would just like, kind of like, yeah, yeah. And I thought he was playing. And so I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, I would throw it in there just to kind of plant the seed, I guess. Cause I'm like, yeah. well, maybe one day he will let me borrow it. And, um, the year before graduation, that December, I go down to my parents' hometown every Christmas. So I was going down there and I, and I took, and I, and I asked them because the kids on CPS are on break during Christmas break. So I said, Hey, what if I um, borrowed, you know, a couple of your um, equipment and um, went down and did a screening on the kids just to kind of gauge how many kids that like, you know, like I would do the, the um, trip for And that's when he's like, oh, you're serious. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I want to do my mission trip. So he's like, okay. He's like, yeah, he's like, I'll borrow you an auto refractor, an eye care. And um, I took a vision chart with me. Um, And so I went and I did this and I I took my things with me and I went to do a screening. And like, I remember I contacted the school director down there uh, that was in charge of like the majority of the schools down there. And basically, um, they told parents to go and um, take their kids. And I show up and I took a couple of my cousins. I was showing them how to check VAs. I was showing them, like, you know, like how to help. Yeah. Two kids showed up. 
two kids showed up to my screening and I was just like, oh my. So um, <laughs> I, I was like, oh my gosh, like nobody wants glass. Like nobody wants, well, it was just a screening, but I think it was just like they weren't interested because there was no like game to it, you know, mm-hmm. and everybody was on vacation. So that those two weeks that they have off, like they're not trying to go to the school and get like mm-hmm. extra stuff done where it's not providing you anything back. So I was like, I was really bummed out. And I was just like, oh, I just brought all this stuff for like nothing, you know, like, I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm like, well, oh, well. But I knew that there was a need because I go down there and I see all these kids with no glasses. I've been to the school. It's like I've gone to pick up my 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 um, little cousins from school. Like mm-hmm. nobody's ever wearing glasses. And I'm just like, I know these kids need glasses. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, being Hispanic, like you run like there's a lot of stigmatism that runs yeah. in our culture. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I know you need glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was just like, oh, my gosh. So. I, one, I was a little disappointed in how the director took care of it, because I guess they didn't really market it that much either. The the mom that did take their kids said nobody, you know, like, she didn't know about it. Um, so I was like, you know, what, I got to take these, like this matter into my own hands. So then when it was came time to graduation, um, I remember contacting my cousin who has kids in the school program. And like, it literally was like verbal, like mom to mom to mom to mom, like, know that somebody's coming they're going to do eye exams and the kids down here yeah and this wasn't a screening anymore at this point I'm like I'm going to go down with all my equipment um so that's literally how I let the town know that I was going was just like word of mouth and Mm -hmm. uh, mom sharing on Facebook (laughs) and then um at that point Dr. Lewis was like okay well it's summertime they have three months off of school and he's like you can borrow more of the equipment so I actually lugged down a whole frapter, like in a in a luggage piece that. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, the eye care, um, an auto refractor, a computer for the VAs. You brought all of this in like an extra suitcase. <laughs> yeah. No, so I drove down. So I oh, oh in, gotcha. Yeah, so, so I drove all of this down. Um, from Chicago down to down to Zacatecas so it was like it's like a 34 hour drive maybe wow by yourself Rosa by yourself no no here goes a shout out to my uncle because my uncle um, offered to help me drive down there so (laughs) yeah it was uh quite the trip it was pretty a pretty heavy set of equipment that I took um and then getting to the border uh, I know there was a question in there about like if I ran into like any difficulties getting to the border oh my goodness um I run into customs and they start giving me such a hard time about passing this stuff over and they were just like well like I don't know if you're bringing this stuff down here to sell and I'm like I'm not selling it I'm doing it to do like a mission trip I'm like I'm like um I'm, I'm like I'm doing it as a free service and they're like well how do I know they like it's just so unorganized down there you guys have mm-hmm. no idea and it's just like did you have oh, to yeah, show yeah. any like paperwork like you could show them your ICO like pictures of you in like an ICO shirt or like at the school in the they classroom in the clinic <laughs> nothing <laughs> they're like no this is not legit (laughs) what oh yeah so um I mean I had like a I remember I had a note from like Dr. Lewis and everything saying like oh like this equipment belongs to ageless eye care that's smart before the police come find you and say you stole (laughs) any equipment yeah so that's, that's exactly what so I was like oh my gosh I'm like I was having a panic attack. I'm like, I just drove 24 hours from Chicago to be stopped at the border. And yeah. um, the guy from the customs was like, you know what, ma'am, if I were you, I would just take this over to um, a rent to storage unit and leave your equipment there because I like, we can't let you pass with it. And I'm like, oh. what? Like, I'm like, I'm like this whole, like I took like a month's worth of time to go down there and do this. I'm like, I, this is what I came out to do. I'm like, I, I need my equipment. And he's just yeah. like, well, I'll get charge you a small fine and I'll let you take it then. And it was oh. like, I'm like, all right, I know it's fine. They just wanted so, the money. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And I was just like, okay, I'm like, you know what? It's fine. Like it's, as long as I get to still take it and like mm-hmm. do my what I set out to do yeah so yeah and then after, after that luckily I got down there and found a school that let me and I got this idea from being a uh, part of that mobile unit up here in Chicago Public Schools I went to um, 
my cousin's school and I was like, oh, well, do you guys have a little room I can have like for the time being and set up um, a little like optometry lane here and do the eye exams. And the, pr the principal there was so on board with it, very helpful. He was just like, yeah, like let's do it. And um, so he let me use that, that room um, for that time being. Um, so I'd go there um, every day around one o'clock because I think the kids would be out of school around like 1.30 or something. Mm -hmm. So I would set up and by the time they were done, oh my gosh, you guys, if you guys only saw like the first day, there was a whole line of kids lined up with their Aww. parents. Like, and I was like, my heart was just like, oh my gosh, like I was worried because of that screening I did in December that I was like, <laughs> yeah. nobody showed up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, what is Persistence is like, key. Yeah. yeah. Persistence yeah. is And key. word of mouth is important. Apparently you just proved it. <laughs> yeah. That's word of mouth. That's the market right there. So anyways, yeah. um, so, and, and here the difference was too, with like that I was going to not only do the exam, but provide a pair of glasses for a kid who needed them. So that was the whole, like, um, I think that made a big difference too, mm -hmm. versus my first attempt was just like, I'm just screening your kid. And they were like, well, what's this that going to do? Yeah. For me? You know, like, yeah. So you didn't have any other optometrists join in or did you have any um, like other volunteers or other opticians that came in from the village to help out or any, anyone? Oh, no, um, the, there is one optometrist in the town, but I think they were away during that time. I, mm -hmm. I didn't ever get in touch with them. And then um, I, I don't think he even has an optician. I think it's just that optometrist yeah. there doing like everything from start to finish. And then, um, and then uh, aside from that, um, no, I just, I had a couple cousins, like I showed them how to check VAs and I was like, oh, oh. like help me at least like, you know, I had to train them a little bit. You recruited the I, volunteers. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, um, and I mean, I gave them a little bit of money just for, cause I mean, they, it's very, what's it called? a very poor town and like they mm -hmm. really like I don't know they, like any job is good so yeah they were yeah. like yeah sure I'll help you so I taught them how to help me with the eye care and check pressures and and check VAs so yeah wow was, uh, you said um you provided them with glasses did you take glasses from Chicago so I did um Dr. Dr. Lewis with Ageless Eye Care with his whole like CPS program um, that he where he goes school to school. They actually carry like a bunch of frames with them. It's like a stack of like I don't know this, this high. I can't remember what lab he used, but mm -hmm. it was pretty cheap. And he's like, you know what? Like honestly, he hooked it up. Like I I was able to get frames and lenses for pretty cheap because he told them, you know. I have this um, new grad who's doing this service. Um, can you guys help her with like, you know, cutting costs of the lenses? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. So yeah. he was able to like, he save me a ton of money on that. Yeah. He let me take down a set of frames and they would pick them out. They would be so excited and trying on their glasses. And um, I had my cousins help me with that too. Like, I'll help them, you know, pick out a frame. And I'm like, if you guys are confused and like, that's not a good fit, like, let me know and I'll run over. And um, cause yeah. it would get pretty, it would get pretty busy. <laughs> I remember there were times where like, I was just like, I couldn't, I could barely eat like, because it was just like, yeah, so busy. What was the process of getting the frames delivered to the patient then? So they pick out a frame. Did you just make notes of who wanted what? And then you bring it back to the mm -hmm. lab in Chicago and then have them yeah, ready? So uh-huh so pretty much I did it just like he does it here like I had an exam form and that's where I'd write like patient name birthday and um their um their final rx findings and then I'd write down like oh um the name of the frame the color the mm -hmm. size and then that's how I I when once I got back I had I went through each exam form and like inputted the information yeah. and um, sent the order out so when they came in they had the patient name and all that information on there. So, and then you guys shipped it to the school so that the students would pick it up, or did you send it to like each student I, I, individually? I sent it. Um, my brother went on a trip down there shortly, at, like once the lenses arrived, the frames arrived, um, and I sent them down with him because and we oh. we go a lot to my parents' hometown, or we did, and um, so he took them down, and uh, my my cousin that helped me do a lot of this, she was the one that helped um, 
distribute them out because she knows a lot of the kids down there and okay her kids still there so so she was able to like distribute and stuff she was my little optician oh how many cousins did you have helping you was it just like a couple or was it like like a whole family it was usually two of them okay just two yeah yeah no it wasn't that many of us um Honestly, we'd fall behind because of me. Like sometimes the auto refractor wouldn't be working, and there I am scoping away, and I'm just like, like the auto refractor would sometimes just like break down on me, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, so I'll scope and all, like, cause it definitely helps a lot, like you know, like to give you an idea. Mm-hmm. And then once that mm-hmm. wasn't there, I'm like, I really gotta sharpen up these rep skills here. So over yeah. <laughs> yeah. days, I'm like, all right. It was and then, how many kids did you end up seeing in a day? I went to, it was like, it, it was like 167, I think I remember. Wow. Oh, not in a day. Sorry. Not oh, in a day. But <laughs> it was like, whole, Rosa, you were not trip. sleeping. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. I thought you meant for the whole time being. I think it was like 167. I can't remember wow. how many I see a day, but it'd be maybe like 15 a day, 20 a day. Okay. That's a lot. Was, but that's, that's still a lot, a lot for like. Kids, yeah. 20 kids a day. <laughs> oh, Something like Deepon that. Deepon can and handle then, one. Oh, yeah, I'm like done after one. I'm like, all right, <laughs> my patience is out. 15 minutes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it was so funny because then it was like there were days um, that they would come and there would be a line and I'd tell them like, okay, I tell my cousins because my cousins would have a little sign up sheet and then, you know, I'd say, okay, cut it off after this one, like no more. And then people would come and be like, oh like you know like I, re- I really need one like she she can't see well and it'd be like all right just add a hand and like yeah. that that would just like keep and I would get out of there so late and it's just like it would just it was it was um but it was like again rewarding like I felt good doing it but oh, there yeah. were days that were a little longer and I'm like oh I just want to go home yeah and, I think um, but it just I think that's how me and Raph felt when we did our mission trip in Mexico as well. It was, uh, our days were long for sure. Like we would Rob, I think we would get up at like 6am and then start no, earlier. We used to get up at like five 30. Yes. Oh yeah. God. Six o'clock. We used to have our breakfast and by seven, we had to be at the screening. Yeah. And then we oh would be God. working until like maybe seven or yeah. six or seven. It was a and good then- 10 to 12 hours. We worked in the wow. day. That is yeah. super long. Yeah. And it was yeah, hot. Guess- it was super hot. Yeah. I remember like oh, I'll yeah. be doing red and I'll be like sweating. I'm like, somebody <laughs> come and fan me, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you that the second time around was like it, it paid that. off really yeah. well, you know, all of that hard work and the bribes at the border. Like <laughs> now it was all worth it, right? <laughs> yeah. I was just like my, my worry was, and I hope Dr. Lewis isn't listening to me, but I, my worry was just like, what if they try to take my stuff away? Like it can be yeah. kind of corrupt at the border. So I'm just yeah. like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I was going to run into this. Like I had my letter, I had like, you know, like proof of like, you know, like this is mm-hmm. borrowed, I'm bringing it back. And they re- like, you, you can run into like a customs official that just isn't, I don't know. For anyone who's hopefully planning on, on organizing a mission trip, I guess that's rule number one is maybe travel with a bunch of optometrists or travel, maybe sign up with an organization that kind of already manages mission trips because then, yeah, Mm -hmm. I guess you won't run into this all by yourself at the border, you know, possibly not getting in. So talking about like lenses and how you had to pay um kind of out of your pocket for the lenses and the frames were there any other expenses that you had to do out of pocket well the first one was the bribe second part (laughs) was how much did that cost you just out of curiosity it was like around 100 bucks it wasn't that bad but it was just yeah, but, but 100 just, US, like, right? 100 US, yeah. so about like 200 Canadian. 120 Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just once I got back, it was just paying for the glasses and the lenses themselves, which I was thinking of maybe, you know, um, starting a GoFundMe or something to get like help to pay for them. Yeah. But um, it wasn't that bad. It was like, I don't, I can't like exactly quote it, but I think I spent maybe like $500 on it. 
after it really for, wasn't that bad like for like 170 kids for glasses but like not, all you... not all oh, of yeah. them needed glasses. not all of them needed them yeah i want to say i ordered maybe like 70 and it was um a, a couple of them were were double orders for the kids that had like really highest um prescriptions i was like mm-hmm. well let me get them a backup pair in case they like mm-hmm. lose them or break them because yeah. it was like you really should be in glasses yeah um, i knew a lot of i knew a lot of those kids needed to be in glasses yeah, so. <laughs> um you know, I'm really glad that we spoke with you now so openly about how you organized the mission trip, because I do remember personally, like during school, you brought up the idea and you were saying, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to organize a mission trip. And I was like, whoa, yeah. Rosa, <laughs> hold up. How are you even doing yeah. this? How are you handling this? This is so much work. Mm-hmm. But now that you yeah. actually talked through the steps, like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sound um, impossible at all. You know, this, this does yeah. sound like something that people can do. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, you know, it sounds like you were definitely in good hands where you had connections with ODs who had the travel equipment and or the portable equipment and also mm-hmm. access to cheaper lenses and frames. Um, I think I have one, one question that you may not be able to answer, but, you know, if we were thinking of doing a mission trip and we don't have connections with someone like this, do you know of any frame and lens companies that are easy to approach when you want to do a mission trip and you want to ask some of these companies like, hey, do you, uh, you know, are you able to give me a discounted price if I yeah. want to do a mission trip? I was lucky enough that I didn't really have to search around because I had yeah. that connection with Dr. Lewis and he was able to one, hook me up with like the equipment to hook me up with a place that does you know, he gave me a really good discount on frames and lenses. Um, so I was lucky enough that I didn't really have to search for that. But I mean, I don't think it's, it's worth a try to ask, like call mm-hmm. up Essilor, a SLR rep or something and, you know, mention what you're trying to do. And I think that that's a good start. And they would be able to kind of guide you into like, well, maybe we can't, but so and so can or something, you know, like, I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know, like, it's a good deed that you're doing and I'm sure somebody will be willing to help. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think that would yeah. be like, if anybody's thinking about doing it, I, the worst thing you can do is like ask and be told, no, I don't know. <laughs> and then you just yeah. go to the next one. Yeah. So that's very true. Oh, sweet. Now I miss Mexico. I want to go back. <laughs> yeah. so, it's a like, good one. Let's... Yeah. It's like bringing back like <laughs> flashbacks of mine and Deepon's trip because in the evening we would walk around the town it was such it's a really small town too and like Mm -hmm. people knew who we were and they were even like they would come to us and they were like thank us even though there was like a big language barrier you you could tell that like they were just so happy Mm -hmm. and they just like welcomed Mm -hmm. you to their town Mm -hmm. it was a really Mm -hmm. good experience yeah. And like meeting the people that we worked with or volunteered with too was just as amazing. So, yes. I mean, yeah, I don't think we'll ever forget those personalities and mm-hmm. um, those mm-hmm. friendships will always be remembered too. And yeah, some of those nights that we had, it was just, I'll never forget those experiences. So yeah, just waiting for COVID to be over so we can do this again. <laughs> hey, like- yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> seriously. So are you actually planning to organize more mission trips in other locations? For the moment, not right now, but I think I, I definitely would like to in the future again, because I mean, I don't know, there's, there's a need for it. Like there's yes. so many underserved populations out there that like, I don't know, I think here, like it's taken for granted that you have such access to eye care and it's like mm-hmm. everywhere else. So it's not that easy. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, in that town, like there's one optometrist and I, he wasn't available for like the longest. So yeah. um, <laughs> I, where was he this whole time? <laughs> you were there yeah, all summer. Yeah. Yeah. So, he um, came back and he thought everyone in glasses. He's like, what he's happened? Like, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> where did all you come from? <laughs> you oh probably read God. out of business. Well, yeah, thank you. I mean, thank you so much, Rosa, for sharing and being open about the experience. I think we've always been curious as to know how the trip went because, you know, Mm -hmm. this was post graduation. So obviously we all kind of went our separate ways and, and, you know, the communication between all of us obviously gets less after graduation because everyone's celebrating or sleeping for like five months after (laughs) after graduation. So catching up on all the sleep. 
seven yeah minutes. catching up on all the sleep <laughs> and um i think you what i said before i'll say it again you definitely made mission trip sound less scary less uh daunting and less of a hassle you know you, i think the way that you described how you went about it even as a you organized this as a student you know, right after boards mm -hmm. and right after, you know, final exams. Um, so it's anyone can do it. If you can do it. Yeah. Anyone can do it if they're really motivated and curious to yeah, get it done. For sure. But I do want to say like, shout out to Dr. Lewis. It's like the, all that equipment was his and it was yeah. just like, very, so nice of him. So you never told him what happened at the border though? <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to, now he'll know. know. He'll be like, Rosa? <laughs> Never again, never again, um, not with yeah, my equipment. Sorry, if, if you're listening, Dr. Lewis, I'm sorry, but I got it back. I got it back. 